I don't see why I can't have a cut. That would be better than nothing. Maisie Blake had her hair cut last week, and it looks lovely. <coughs> what are you mind about Maisie Blake neither? She's gone. Miss Pritchard doesn't think so. She likes Maisie Blake a lot. She said it looks ever so nice. What? Her hair. Get her with your breakfast, you're really good. And stop sleeping. Sleep for sleep for sleep Haven't you got a handkerchief? Yes, but it's a clean one. Never mind, use it. A child can't help having a cold. She can blow her nose, can she, even if she's got a cold? <laughs> Dottie Watson's got a terrible cold. She's had it for weeks. It went to her chest, and then it went back to her head again. That's the worst of schools. You're always catching something. Miss Pritchard's awful mean to Dottie Watson. She said she's had enough of it. Enough of what? Her cold. He ought to have them seen to. You know, as far as I do, you can stop them making that noise every now and then. I'm sure I don't know why I don't get a plumber in. Because I do not consider it necessary. You would, if you slept in my room. Gargle, gargle, gargle. Oh, nice. It's all very fine for you. You're at the end of the passage. You don't have to sleep there. What do you mean by that? You know perfectly well what I mean. Listen to me, though, it's gal. I've got a perfect right to complain if I want to, and well, you know it. It isn't as if I was staying here for nothing. I don't know what's the matter with you lately, mother. You do nothing but grumble. Me? Grumble? <laughs> I like that, I'm sure that's what that is. What are you doing? It gives me a headache. You ought to do something about those headaches of yours. They seem to pop on and off at the very least thing. And I wish you wouldn't pass in the match of not staying here for nothing. Well, it's true. I don't. Anyone would think I'd be uh, taking advantage of you. Well, they wouldn't be far wrong. Mother, how can you? You're not paying a penny more, but you can afford. I never said I was! It's not about no money, it's a lack of consideration! Pity you don't go and leave ignore for a change. Nora hasn't got a spare room. Pretty stars, a lovely one, looking over the railway. I'm sure her hot water white pipes wouldn't annoy you because there isn't hot water in them. Very <laughs> well, if I'm not wanted here, I can always go to a boarding house or a private hotel. Can't you? I am not the sort of say my welcome anywhere. Well, don't sign with it now. <laughs> It seems as though some of us had got out this bed the wrong side this morning. Mom, can I have some more toast? No. I could make it myself over the kitchen fire. No, I tell you. Can't you understand the English? Never mind. You've had quite enough and you will be late for school. Never mind that. Here's the best. Go buy yourself a sponge cake and bag. Thanks, Grandma. You will do no such a thing, Elsie. I'm not going to have a child stuffing herself with sponge cake in the middle of the high street. It is in the shop here. Go on and now for him and give him the lady. No, Mom, it's only time to... What you? Oh, all right. That poor little soul. I trouble you not to spoil her as a mother. Spoil her? I like that. Better than half starving her. I'm insinuating. I am not insinuating anything. Elsie is getting a big girl now and she only had one bit of a toast. And she used that for her egg. I saw her. It's none of your business, and in the future I would be much obliged if you keep your two places to yourself. Very well, of course, if I'm to be abused every time I try to bring a little happiness into the child's life. Anyone would think I ill treated her the way you talk. You certainly knock her enough. I don't do any such a thing, and I wish you'd be quiet. There's no need to lose your temper. I'm not losing my temper. If 
if I knew when you were as his age what you were going to turn out like, I would have given you what for, I can tell you. Pity it was your One thing, I never stinted any of my children. I wish you would leave me to bring up my own child in my own way. That hoe's been hanging over half a week, and a fat lot you care. Her doors are heaven, and the whole house thinks of weapons. What more can I do? She ought to have had Dr. Bristol last Saturday when he was so bad. He'd have cleared it up in no time. You and your Dr. Bristol. Nice thing if they turn to bronchitis. Mrs. Henderson's Muriel got bronchitis, also neglecting the cold. The poor child couldn't breathe. They had to have two kettles going night and day. I suppose your official Dr. Bristol told you that. Yes, he did. And what's more, he saved that girl's life. You ask Mrs. Henderson. Oh, catch yes, Mrs. Henderson for anything but not like this stuff of thing. Mrs. Henderson's a very nice lady like woman. Just because she's quiet and oh. a bit reserved, you say she's stuck up. Who does she think she's anyway? Lady Mountbatten? <laughs> really, Doris, you make me tired. Sometimes you really do. If you're so fond of Mrs. Henderson, why don't you go and see more of her? I notice you don't go there often. I go and I'm invited. Exactly. <laughs> She's not the kind of woman that likes people dropping in and off all the time. We can't all be any faucets. What's the matter with any faucet? She's coming for one thing. She dyes her hair for another, and she's a bit too free and easy all around for my taste. At least she doesn't do the nails anyway. I should think not after the sort of life she's led. Oh, how do we all, how do you know what sort of life she's led? Everybody knows. You just have to look at her. I'm a woman of the world, I am. You can't put a wool over my eyes. No time to idea with you. What are you looking for? The pixies parade. I had it last night. What with the blue cover? It's at the bottom. It isn't. Oh dear, Miss Pritchard's gonna be mad if I can't find it. Perhaps you put it in your satchel, dear. Here, let me look. Is this it? Oh yes! Thanks, Grandma! Go along now, for heaven's sake. You will be late. All right. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, Grandma. Your Grandma kiss. Goodbye, Dad. Don't do that on the way home. Goodbye. <laughs> there now. If you are going to the shops this morning, would it be troubling you too much to get me a real of white cotton? Oh, I thought you were coming with me. I'm not really if you know what to eat. Oh. I will put it on my head. If it's out of your way, please don't trouble. You'll do another time. Henry, it's past nine. Oh, I know. You will be late. Never mind. That's a nice way to talk, I must say. I'm sure if my robot had ever laid the bell like that in the mornings, I'd have thought the world had come to an end. Henry, you do it once too often, mark my words. Well, that corner is skinny. You will have to move now, I'd like to say. All right, all right. Where's right. that though? Doing the bell, I'm sorry. Look at the look at the him. He came here very late last night. I heard him go into the back. That sister makes a terrible noise. Does it indeed? Yes, it does. I'm very sorry, I'm sure. Where did he been? How do we know? Did you ask him? I didn't tell you Been drinking? No. It sounded very like it to me. All that banging about. You know how he never touches a joke. I know he says he doesn't. Oh, you shut up, mother dear. I don't have father. You watch your tongue, Doris Gow. Don't let me hear you say anything against the memory of your poor father. I wasn't. Yes, you were. You are insinuating again. Father drank and you know it. Everybody knew it. You're a wicked woman. It's true. <laughs> your husband, oh, your father was a gentleman, which is far more than I can say your husband will ever be with all his book reading and his night classes. Night classes indeed. Who is it? I suppose he was at the night class last night. Mind your own business. Huh. Where were you last night? Why? Mother wants to know. So do I. <laughs> I was done late at the shop and I had a bit of dinner in town. Hold it. Yes, no. It was Charlie Henderson.
worry. Your supper is all ready. The kettle from the gas stove where you want it. We've ours. Oh. And you don't look injured either. If you manage to get home a bit earlier, it would save a lot of travel all around. Very sorry. It's all, to, it's all very fine to say sorry. You are getting later and later this last few weeks. They can't keep you over time every night. Very well, Dilar. I'll tell them. I'll tell them. Be ready. Put this person in the Again. What a surprise! What's the matter with it? I don't know yet. It's perfectly fresh, if that's what you mean. Why are you also dressed up? We're going to the pictures. Oh, I see. You can leave everything on the tray when you're finished and leave it in the kitchen for Ethel. Good old Ethel. What? It's a good old Ethel. Well, it sounded very silly, I'm sure. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Why? You look funny. Feel funny. Have you been drinking? Yes. I knew it. <laughs> I had a drink and a so had a whiskey and a soda <laughs> in town and another one at the plow. I don't understand what the problem is. What for? Because I felt like it. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. That hat looks awful, by the way. <laughs> don't just speak to me like that. Why not? Because I won't have it so there. It's a common little hat and it looks dreadful. Now listen to me, Harry. The next time I catch you drinking and coming home here and insulting me, I will... What would you do, Dory? I will give you a piece of my mind. That's what I will do. It'll have to be a very little piece, Dory. You can't really afford much. I would be pretty much obliged if you can't even tell me what this means. It's quite simple, actually. I'm celebrating. What do you mean, celebrating? What are you talking about? Tonight is our anniversary. Don't look so soft. I was in your sitting up you with them. I'm not talking about that one. Tonight is the very, very, very special night. Includes you too, we'll see. It's the anniversary of the very first night I had my affair with you, and you got in the family way. Henry! Hooray! How you there say such a dreadful thing you brought the child too? Three years and a bit after that wonderful night, our child was born. Considering how long it took forming yourself, Elsie, I'm surprised you're not a nicer little girl than you are. Go upstairs, Elsie. Stay here, Elsie. Yes, I tell you. But, Mom, mother, take her for God's sake. Sit going to down. <laughs> Sit down, I tell you. Well, I never. Where's like a charm? For an exhibition you are making of yourself, I must say. Not bad, is it? I'm quite proud Go of to myself. Bed. Stop bordering me about. What right have you got to nag at me, to boss me, to tell me what to do? No right at all. I'm the one who pays the rent. I'm the one who cares for you. I'm the one who keeps for you. What do you do in return? I'd like to know. Nothing. I sit through breakfast while you and your mother wrangle. You're too busy being snappy and bad-tempered to even say good morning. I come home tired from working all day and tend to wonder if there's a hot dinner waiting for me. See the sound? That's what I think of it. <laughs> and nothing about those. The bloody sauce. Should I leave to see the, should I leave to see the man I married make such a beast of himself? Oh, quit working yourself into a state. You'll need all your control once you've heard what I gotta say to you. You can me. Sit down. Oh, well, sit down. I'm afraid you'll have to miss the picture for once. Yes, you can. Yes, go on, docs. I've been waiting for this moment for many, many years, and it's not going to be spoiled by you running away. I'm the owner of this room. You are gonna stay right where you are until I've had my say. <laughs> Shut up! Shut up! Elsie, go to the sideboard and grab some pork for your mother. Go on! Do as I tell you. <laughs> you drunken brute. Where isn't that mother? Far was. Just you wait and see. Take some pork door. You do good. I don't want any choke me. Come on. Here. Keep away from me. Drink it and stop sniveling. <laughs> never, never forgive for this. Never, never, never as long as I live. Ah, Pay no attention, Dory. He's drunk. I'm not drunk. I've only had two whiskeys and sodas. 
was enough to give me enough curry to take the first plunge. You'll never believe how scared I was thinking of working cold blood. Not scared anymore, though. It's much easier than I thought it was going to be. My only regret is that I didn't do this sooner. Many years ago, in fact. And tell me to your face, Dory, what I think of you, what I think of that poor little kid, and what I think of your old bitch of a mother. Here we go! You heard me. Old bitch is what I said, and old bitch is what Leave I said. Get me out of this room. I'm not going to stay here and be insulted. You are going to stay right where you are until I say different. Oh, am I? We'll see about that. You don't. Let go of me! Oh, mother, don't let the neighbors know all your business. Help! Help! Stand aside, Dory. We don't all want to get wet. What am I? Number 17, Cransworth Road, Clapham. Oh, now listen here, Mother. I don't want there to be any misunderstanding. I like slapping you just now. It was lovely. If you don't behave and be quiet, I shall slap you again. Now then. No! You no! shall sit no! in your chair. <laughs> and be quiet. No! And remember, if you feel faint again, the water's already for you. <laughs> And go sit down, you look silly. Come here. And keep Elsie quiet, will you, or I'll fetch her once again. Shut up, <sighs> Okay, I am going to begin explaining a few things to you very quietly. Enjoying yourself, aren't you? Oh, you have no idea. You will be on the other side of your face before I don't beat you. Surely, surely I will, Dory. Don't you dory me either. Coming home here drunk, hitting poor mother, frightening Essie out of her wit. I'll still do her some good. Do them both some good. A little bit of excitement in the house. God knows it's been dull enough as a rule. Very clever, oh, very clever, I'm sure. Fifteen, no, sixteen years ago, today in fact, Dory, we had a little rough and tumble in your Aunt Daisy's house. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Ah, was it Stansfield Road? Yes, Stansfield Road, Sunday afternoon. Your Aunt Daisy went to the Golden Calf with Mr. Simmons, her lodger, which, as the writers say, was also her wont. This is disgusting. I won't listen to another word. You will shut up. No, where was I? Stansfield Road. Ah, yes. You just had to have a husband back then, Dory. I remember with Nora married, Phyllis engaged, both of them younger than you. You just had to have a husband. And you fixed on me. Ah, I fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. You were pretty enough. And then, a couple of months later, told me you clicked. Cried a hell of a lot. I remember vividly. They told me the disgrace would kill your mother. Little did I know back then that it would take a bit more than that to kill that leather old mare. You've had one sock in the jaw this evening. And you're not just asking for another, you're standing up and begging for it. I'm happy to offer a sock. I have the police on you, my fat fellow. Then I have to be pretty nippy. My boat sails in the morning. Bro. Uh, no. I'm going away. I've got my passport and my ticket right here. My passport photo is a fair screen. I wish I could show it to you, but I don't want you to see the nice new name I've got. You can't do that. I can't help you stop by law. It's desertion. <laughs> That's exactly what it is! Desertion! Where are you going? You're going to tell me, where are you going? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Maybe Africa, maybe South America, maybe China. There's lots of places you know nothing about, Dory. You probably laughed at me for reading books, but I learned a hell of a lot from books. <sighs> there are islands in the South Seas with cocoa palms and sunshine all year round. You can live there for practically nothing. Then there's... There's New Zealand and Australia. With a little bit of capital, I might even start in a small way sheep farming. Think about it. Miles and miles of open countryside, good food and fresh air. Ah, that might suit me beautifully. Then there's South America. They've got cocoa plantations and sugar plantations and banana plantations. If I go to South America, I'll send you a whole crate. Have a banana, Dory. Have a banana. I have had 
given you the best years of my life, and don't you forget it. You've never given me the best of anything. You didn't even have Elsie willingly. It's not true. Stop acting like Elsie. Don't you tell me he's weaker. He's weaker. It's true. You know it as well as I do. It was only right that you married me. It was only fair. You took advantage of me, didn't you? You took away my innocence. It was only right that you paid for it. Come off it, Dory. You weren't the innocent one. I was. I found out a long time ago that you cheated me. And when I realized it, made sure it was certain, I started cheating you. Prepare yourself, Dory. You'll be really upset this time. I've been saving. Every week for the past 10 years, I have earned a little bit more than you thought I was. I managed, by hook and by crook, to put away 572 pounds. Did you hear me? 572 pounds. Tell me you could have! It's not true! You couldn't do it. You can't give it away. I should have found out. Ah, I thought that would rouse you, but don't get excited. Don't get worked up. It's not for you. It's for me. And it's all in the bank. All but 50 pounds of it. That will be the last you ever get from me. 50 pounds. Henry, you couldn't be so cruel. You couldn't be so mean. I've done what I think is fair. And what I think is fair is a damn sight more than you deserve. I've transferred the freehold of this house in your name, so you'll always have a roof over your head. You can take an orders in a pinch. Though God help the poor bastards if you do. Henry, listen to me. You can't do this dreadful thing. If you won't forgive me, think of Lassie. Think of poor little Lassie. <sighs> Don't start weeping and wailing now, Dory. I know what you're like. I know you through and through. You're scared now. You're frightened out of your wits. But give you half a chance, and you'll be worse off than you ever were. You're a bad lot, Dory. Not what the world would call a bad lot, but what I call a bad lot. And I'm sick of the sight of you. Goodbye, Dory. Hey, listen to me, Henry. You can't do this with me. You can't do one of those bits. You can't be much to stop. <laughs> I've been a bad wife, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to be better, I'm really sorry, but I'm real. If you want to forgive me, think of us, think of us. Poor little Elsie, my eye. I think Elsie's awful. I always have, ever since she was a child. All she's ever done is whine and snivel and expect everything for nothing. Oh, Mom, did you hear what he said? Did you hear Don't listen to him! Don't listen to him! Elsie can go work in a year or so. In the meantime, Dory, it seems you're still a quite young and strong woman. Strong as a rock, it seems. <laughs> Here's your 50 pounds. Hey, Lady, you can't go. You can't go. You can't go. You can't go. I'm taking one last look at you, Dory. I shall never see you again for as long as I live. Mother, mother, and child. You're past it now, mother. Past the thick of the fray. You're nothing more than a music hall joke, a stepmother. Pardon me. A mother-in-law with a bit of money put, that, uh, put aside. Doris, the next few years, will most likely show if you have guts or not. Maybe what I'm doing in the, in the long run will save your mortal soul. But I don't count on it. Your mortal soul's a bit too measly. You're a natural cheat and a bully. And I'm sick of the sight of you, as I said. Elsie, you have a chance. I grant you it's a small one, but still you have a chance to be a decent human being. If you take one parting piece of advice from your father, you will spend the very first money you ever earn on having your andenoids out. <laughs> Goodbye, one and all. Nice to have known you. <laughs>